This week on The Rutledge Perspective, I want you to consider four things. Courage, confrontation, cowardice, and candor. Again, those four things are courage, confrontation, cowardice, and candor. And these four things that I want you to consider are important as we move into what we're going to do next, as we consider who we are, as we really get to understand where we are and what we want, and then we take steps to move into empowered action. Those four pieces are critical to understand as we're moving forward. So let's dive in. This past weekend, I was listening to podcasts. I was listening to Guy Raz again on his new show, Wisdom from the Top. And at least it's new to me. I had not heard the show before. And there were two interviews that I listened to, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. Now, the first interview happened to be with a black man. And the second interview happened to be with a white woman. And I only give you that race and gender because it comes into play when we talk about those four words. When we talk about courage, when we talk about confrontation, when we talk about cowardice, and we talk about candor, those demographics come into play in how those things are exhibited, those four words are exhibited. So in the first interview, Chad Sanders is the the person who's being interviewed, and he's got a new book out about leadership, um, Black Magic, and what Black leaders have learned through trauma and triumph. And through his interview, he talks about his experiences and what he went through as a black man and a black child in educational institutions that were predominantly white. Now, he grew up in areas that were heavily black. He grew up in the DMV and his parents were both educators. And and he talks about how they really made sure that every day they had dinner with their children. And that time was sacred, right? No, no one interrupted that time because they really wanted to make sure that they were giving their children this, this idea of the world and, and what was important and the things that they should be thinking about and looking for. And he talks about how his parents really encouraged him to do more than just play the game, but to figure out how the game was made, right? Who distributed it, all these good things, right? Those ideas of entrepreneurship. And through his conversation, he says, you know, there were many times when he was faced with racism. Some of it was blatant, of course. And then other times it was just a little bit more subtle, but not so much. That kind of passive aggressive madness that we've all experienced. And he says one of the things that his parents taught him was you have to confront that stuff when it happens. You don't let that stuff slide. And he said, and I'm going to mix his words here, not say this exactly as he said it, but one of the things he talked about when when he talked about confronting people was that to not confront was to be a coward and to be a coward was not acceptable. That you had to confront people when you were faced with these situations and he had a number of times when he he stood up it's what i talk about a lot in terms of speaking truth to power you know and and when you are one of very few if not the only one that ability to speak up in the face of being marginalized or being dismissed is not only challenging and difficult but it isn't necessarily safe And he talks about how not every time he confronted, was it a safe environment? You know, someone is holding your job in their hand or your promotion or your performance review, or it's a client who doesn't want to do business with you anymore. And and now in the age of social media, it can go and blast you on social media. So there's reputational risk that's very real when you're confronting people's biases. And yet for him, he said, you know, there was no other option. I had to be courageous and say something. I had to confront the attack or I was being a coward and being a coward was unacceptable. So that was the first podcast. The second podcast I listened to was an interview with Kim Scott, who is the founder, developer, you know, the the whole idea of radical candor. And it stemmed, if you listen to her story in this interview, stemmed from a whole feedback process and how it is as I say, it's not unkind to be clear and how part of the problem a lot is we, especially women entrepreneurs, we don't want to hurt people's feelings. If they're not performing the way we want, 
we want them to perform or the up to the expectations that we have set that we may or may not have been clear about. Um, we're afraid to say anything. We don't want to hurt their feelings. Or if someone is loved by everyone else, heaven forbid, we end up being the bad guy. And we forget that as leaders, it is important for us to one, set clear expectations, two, hold people accountable to meeting those expectations and coaching them when that's not happening. And then three, move quickly when someone is just becoming problematic for the team because the team sees it. And that becomes about you, not about the person who's problematic. So she goes through her interview and talks about this radical candor and how she showed up and, and some conversations she had with Sheryl Sandberg. And so in her interview, she says, you know, it is, it is really important for you to be candid with people. When something comes up, you say something, there may be yelling, there may be screaming, there may be all of these kind of things, but you set up an environment where people can tell you that they disagree, or they can tell you when something is wrong. The premise makes a whole lot of sense, right? Both of these people, the premise makes a whole lot of sense. If you see something, say something, don't just sit in silence. If you are a leader and you see people quiet in your meetings, Ask them what's going on. Create an environment where you don't have yes people, that you have people who are willing to tell you the truth. All of these things and both of these people had perspectives that absolutely make perfect sense. If you have courage and if you meet a certain demographic. And the reason I bring up those four words around courage, confrontation, candor and cowardice is because it is not necessarily cowardice to be strategic about when and how you confront an issue, when and how your courage shows up and how your candor shows up. Now, mind you, it is not necessary to be ugly, to be candid. And that's often where things get mixed up. People see candor as being nasty. And it's not necessary to be nasty. That's why when I talk to my clients about performance management, I say, you know, you got to focus on the behavior because it's not about the person's character. The character is none of our business. The behavior is, especially if you're in a business, right? The behavior is the focus. What was the behavior that was unacceptable? What was the impact of that behavior on the desired outcomes? And then how does the behavior get corrected, right? Is having the conversation that really focuses on behavior and outcomes. And that helps to avoid it becoming too personal. And one of the things that Karen Scott says is, you know, it's always personal. I hate it when people say it's not business, it's personal, or it's not personal, it's business, because it's always personal. And I would argue that the impact may be personal, but the situation is about business. And that's what made me such a weird HR person. Business first, HR person second. Mission first, people always. But in order to marry those things, you have to be able to be extremely candid with some compassion. You have to have the courage to do so. You have to be able to confront when necessary and to manage and understand that silence is not in fact always cowardice. Sometimes that reluctance or that decision to stay silent is a matter of survival. It is a matter of political savvy. It is a matter of strategic intent. So I wouldn't necessarily connect a lack of willingness to confront as an immediate connection to cowardice. And yet, if you are sitting in a situation where something just does not feel aligned for you, you are being micromanaged, you are suffering from a number of either blatant or very subtle aggressions in your workplace, in your business, with clients, with colleagues, because sometimes it's colleagues or even subordinates, not necessarily bosses that do these things. Examine, you know, who you are, examine what is it about that alignment that's not working? What is it about that situation that is rubbing you the wrong way? And then are you sitting in fear, which can relate to cowardice, right? I am fearful of doing anything. And if so, can you convert that fear into strategic intent? If the fear is truly about safety and you are truly in a 
unsafe, in an unsafe environment, please move, please move, find a way to exit so that you are not in danger. And I don't mean just physical, but if there is true emotional and, and psychological trauma being thrust upon you, and it is having a huge impact and, and triggering and trauma and all those things that we tend to use now, if it's not a good situation, if it is truly a bad situation for you, please find a way as expeditiously as possible to extricate yourself from the situation so that you can find one that is much more amenable to you. If it's not a safety issue, then from a physical, emotional, and mental safety issue, if it's simply a discomfort and a misalignment, then how can you turn that feel fear into a strategic plan of intentional movement, intentional confrontation, so that you move away from potential feelings of cowardice based on fear into action of courage to manage a confrontation? How do you figure out how to speak truth to power in those moments? And how do you figure out how to be candid in the culture that you're in, in the demographic that you fit in, that does not become backlash to you to put you in a stereotypical bucket. And that's where these two interviews connect. He talks about being, making sure you confront when you are in an environment that is just not amenable to who you are, that you confront the situation, that you say something. She talks about radical candor. If you happen to be a black woman, simply confronting, even if your voice is even, if your facial expressions are neutral, that candor can be seen as confrontation that is aggressive, not assertive. That is somehow undermining or insubordinate as opposed to simply not allowing someone to mistreat you or having a difference of opinion. So radical candor has a very different landing spot depending on the deliverer of the candor and the receiver of the candor in the environment in which you are delivering that radical candor. So be cautious when you're talking about being courageous and being candid with people that you have established a relationship where people know who you are, what you stand for what you will and will not tolerate, and that there are clear expectations on both sides. This is also where it's very important to be very, very clear about the environment that you're in. You know, there's this word about assimilation and it gets such bad rap. And I talk about assimilation as being something that is important to actually understand and not only embrace to an extent. You shouldn't assimilate to the point where it becomes code switching. But sometimes assimilation gives you cover to understand the culture that you're in and understand the political navigation that needs to happen so that your candor is truly seen as candor and does not necessarily have an impact to you or other people as confrontation that is detrimental to you or to them or to your career or to the environment. So as you go into this next week and you think about the conversations that you have to have, you think about the relationships that you have, the teams that you are building, where are you potentially having a challenge with behavior, your own or someone else's? Where are you dreading going to that meeting? Because every time I go to this meeting, when I say something, I'm ignored. Or every time I go into this situation or start working on this project, I've got this person that just does not deliver every single time. Think about those things that are simply not working. Where can you shore up your courage to be candid in a way that confronts the behavior and manages your fear so that it is not your cowardice that shows up, but your willingness to have a conversation that moves the situation forward. Four very powerful things that came up this weekend really thinking through your courage, your confrontation and ability to do confrontation, whether or not you really are exhibiting cowardice or just being strategic in your intent. And how does candor show up for you? Not only you delivering candidly, but also receiving candid feedback. 
Let me know how those things landed for you. It was quite enlightening for me as I listened to both of those things and those two different perspectives and from whom those perspectives came. Because as the show is named, The Rutledge Perspective, shift your perspective, shift your circumstances. By getting all of these different perspectives, we give ourselves an opportunity to see things a little bit differently and modify if we choose our own behavior and be able to really move forward into that thing we say we want. As always, I thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Please, if this made sense to you and it really stirred something in you, share this podcast with someone else who you think would be impacted by it. I appreciate every share and every download. And if you would like to be a guest on the Rutledge Perspective podcast, I interview women on my podcast. If you would like to be considered to be a guest, head to my website, laurelrutledge.com slash podcast. And there's a button there that says, I want to be a guest. And we can jump on a call and see if it makes sense um, for us to do that. And if it doesn't make sense on the Rutledge perspective, I know a lot of podcast hosts who are looking for guests as well. So I would love to connect with you. Also, you will start seeing a pop-up on my website to join my email list to see all the things that are coming forward. Uh, A membership site that is coming as well as a new quick and dirty deep dive masterclass that will be free um, in just an hour that I will probably be conducting on a monthly basis. I haven't decided on the cadence yet, but would love to see you all there. So look for that pop-up coming on my site soon to join the email list so you can get notified of all things Laurel, new podcast episodes, new radio show episodes, new fireside shows, um, all of the things that we're doing and to find a way to work with me because I would love to see you move into your complete alignment to get really clear on your vision and then move into empowered action because it's all about movement. It's all about movement. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Send me a DM and let me know what came up for you. Take care. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Rutledge Perspective Podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and for connecting. You can find previous episodes of the podcast on my website at laurelrutledge.com forward slash podcast. You can also find me on social media at Laurel K. Rutledge and or The Rutledge Perspective. And I'd love your perspective on the things we talk about. And if there's a specific topic you want me to cover, just let me know. And please share this podcast with someone in your village who may need this little piece of perspective today. And if you're so inclined, I would really appreciate a five-star rating and review on the platform of your choice. Apple Podcasts and Spotify reviews are particularly helpful. Thank you again for listening. Take care.